The Philippines up three, one, two, three. The Philippines. Thank you. Enjoy. Tonight, live from the Inspire Theater on the corner of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street, in the heart of fabulous downtown Las Vegas, we present the Downtown Podcast, starring your host Dylan Jorgensen, your co-host Jason Outlaw, Robbie Surface. Tonight's guest from Enclave.com, Keith Conrad. From Freestyle CrossFit, Jake Soteros. Musical performance by Ms. Absurd. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the man who's Zumba certified, Mr. Jason Outlaw. for DJ Lenny Alfonso. Let's hear it for him, huh? <laughs> yes. Yes. How you doing, Lenny? Zumba certified. I'm Zumba certified. <laughs> I'd, I'd rotate a hip so quick. <laughs> me in my hip. It's good. It's good. Well, hey, once again, we want to thank you all for coming out. We really do appreciate it. And this is what's in the news. Just outside of New York City, a farm with horses is experiencing something very strange. The horse manure is spontaneously combusting. That's right, it's catching on fire. Yes, the reason why they figured it out, they said, is because the uh, horse is eating too much political junk. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over the place. It's all over the place. It's in every feed, and you can't get away from it. Uh, famed psychic Miss Cleo just died this week. You guys hear about this? Yeah. You know, I wonder if she saw it coming. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Did I, get an I think I got an awe right here. I'm pretty sure I got an awe right there. Yeah, she liked it. All right, we're right here, me and that girl. All right, good stuff. Um, a man created a, and uh, modeled a Lego figure costume with a human-like skin. This was a source of confusion at the Republican National Convention because they couldn't figure out which bathroom it was going to use. Because... <laughs> Legos have no, I'm getting a lot of Oz tonight, man. <laughs> Where's my life going, Lenny? I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, patrol agents detained two Pokemon Go players uh, that were uh, teens. They were illegally crossing the U.S. border from Canada. That's right. Uh, they said what they were trying to do is they were trying to capture a Trumpet Chew. <laughs> Trump, Trumpet Chew. Trumpet. Uh, they can't all be winners. <laughs> I like that one. That was good. Uh, a Florida man was arrested when police confused donut glaze for meth. That's right. <laughs> Sounds like to me those cops just want to confiscate all the donuts. I'm just saying. <laughs> Isn't that right? I think so. <laughs> yes. They were, like, they were like, no, it's meth. I'll, it's so good. We just can't stop eating it. It's got to be meth. Oh, my gosh. Um, Bill Clinton, in his DNC speech, told the story of how him and Hillary met. That's right. It was at the end of a long day. She came into his office wearing a pantsuit, and then she bent down, and he could have almost sawed down her shirt if it wasn't for her black hair. Oh, I, I'm sorry. That was Monica Lewinsky. Oh. My bad. My bad. Oh, I'm bringing up old stuff, Lenny. I'm, I'm bringing up old stuff. I'm like that <laughs> woman that hangs on to it. Yeah, it's all right. They, it's, have, it's good. they both did have pantsuits. So yeah, yeah, they, they did. did. They yeah. did. Yeah, except Monica's was like breakaway. She was like, shh. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know. That wasn't even written on the yeah, teleprompter. Not even yeah. there. That was off the cuff, roll, ladies and gentlemen. That was right there. It's off the cuff. <laughs> right there. You're only as good as your last ad lib. Good. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, Donald Trump, uh, in a speech, asked Russia if they have Hillary Clinton's 33,000 missing emails to hand them over and the press will reward them handsomely. That's right. And by handsomely uh, reward, Trump means going on a shirtless ride with Putin. <laughs> what do you mean? Shirtless ride. <laughs> oh, I think we got a lot of Donald Trumpers in here. We got Trumpers in here? No? No, no, no one. Oh, that dude. All right, one guy. Solid. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> um, there's a teacher who is suing the school district for allowing her relationship with an underage student to go on. That's right. The school district said they didn't want to step in because that's the only real world experience they can give students. Hey! All right, we've got a wonderful show. Give it up for DJ Lenny Alfonso!
Leading the CrossFit craze here downtown at Freestyle CrossFit, we have Jake Soteros. Come on, Freestyle, make some noise! What's up, man? How are you doing? Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> so, um, CrossFit. Uh, what, what does CrossFit mean to you? Well, CrossFit, I guess, would be a, a way of life. Um, but if you kind of hear it generically defined, they call it constantly varied functional movements performed at high intensity. Oh. Wow. Right. Right. That's, that's wow. fancy talk for a bunch of working out. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 so, um, what, what was the inspiration of opening up a gym here downtown? And uh... Well, downtown wasn't actually my first choice. I mean, I've had a gym on my mind for a long time. I think I've written uh, four different business plans for various kinds of gyms throughout my life. And uh, finally came time to do it. And I actually wanted to get out of Vegas. That was my plan. Um, I wanted to go open a gym in some, some little town in the Northwest. Uh, and then I started looking at uh, what was going on downtown, and I got the downtown bug, and here I am. All right. <laughs> right on, right on. So um, could you kind of explain, I, I understand that there's like kind of levels in CrossFit. Um, could you kind of explain how the promotion process would work? Well, I mean, different gyms do things differently, but I mean, the thing with CrossFit, there's definitely different levels, and a lot of people... Uh, we all work out together, so we have what is called skill. So the workout may call for something that a lot of people can't do, but there's a way that we have of scaling the workout so that everybody can work out together. So no matter what your level, what your skill, we're all working out together, we're all part of the same group, and I think that's why it's ultimately effective, and that's why uh, it keeps people coming back, because there is that sense of community um, where everybody's doing some version of the same thing, working out together. Yeah, I, uh, I I was looking up on uh, your website, and I, there's the uh, the workout of the day, your mm -hmm. wad. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. So you may look at that workout and think, man, there's no way in hell. Can I say hell? Yeah. Okay. So there's no way in hell that I can do that. But the thing is, like, we we write our workouts for the best athletes in our gym, and then people scale down from there. So the workout may call for 100 pull-ups. And I know a lot of people that can't do one pull-up, but there's a way that we can get you through that workout. Scale it to the point where anybody can, you know, at least be Any, active. Anybody, anybody. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I, uh, I used to work for Reebok, and I kind of understand mm -hmm. the, uh, the whole CrossFit craze from its kind of a conception. But um, I, I kind of see it as, like, one of the first implementations of gamifying exercise. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could call it game. I prefer competition. Competition. But, I mean, ultimately, yeah, it is a game. And basically, I think that's also one of the reasons why it's really successful is because it kind of quantifies a workout. I mean, instead of just sweating it out, which I, I love a good sweat as much as the next guy, but it puts a number on everything. And for one, that helps you track your progress, but also it creates, hopefully, a friendly sense of competition. So you and I are in there doing the same workout and we've developed a relationship and I come in there, I'm like, oh man, I'm crushing you today. And you're like, no man, I'm gonna crush you. And it's like every I got day, you right, you got some, me in burpees. Right, some days I crush you, some days you crush me, but it creates that fun little sense, sense of competition that pushes you to work harder than you normally would. Yeah, the, uh, I come from like a really hardcore competitive gaming background, like video games and stuff. So like, I feel that CrossFit would be perfect for me because, I mean, I, I get kind of bored, you know. Well, rutting. you know where we're at, 727 South Main Street. Okay. You can come down <laughs> whenever you're ready. All right. <laughs> I, I'll definitely have to try it. Um, so You guys uh, heard that, right? <laughs> he has to try it. Oh, oh man. That, that's a segment in itself. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to cut that part out, right? No, no, no. <laughs> Um, as far as like uh, trending crazes go, I mean, in addition to like CrossFit and the Fitbit and, you know, we've got uh, new apps and stuff coming out. Um, somebody like myself, I would never find myself walking around in a park, uh, but now Pokemon Go is out. And so I've been exercising a lot more. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, do, you, do you have like a, an, 
opinion for the gamification as far as like apps and stuff go? Uh, yeah, my opinion is that whatever gets you doing something, I'm okay with. Um, so if if it's a Pokemon search and that <laughs> gets you moving, then you should do that. I mean, ultimately, you got to find something that you enjoy because uh, you're not going to do it otherwise. You might force yourself to do something for a certain amount of time because you know it's good for you, but if you don't enjoy it or you don't uh, reap the benefits, you're, you're not going to keep doing it. So yeah, I, I get whatever. bored racing against myself, so, you know. Yeah, and right, and that's the beauty of, like, the small group community training kind of thing. And from what I hear, like, you go to any park and there's, like, 50 Pokemon people yeah. walking around looking for Pokemons. So, I mean, if that's the exercise that those guys are getting, then I'm all for it. Got to got to grab someone and be like, hey, you guys like competition? You're gonna really love. I mean, is it too late to it. like insert some like burpees into Pokemon searching? Dude, like, actually, can hey, we? Maybe do, that's the next big thing. I really think that like Pokemon and CrossFit should team. Like up. that's the only way you can train your guys. Yeah, is by there's doing. A, there's a whole burpees. genre of people that are only gonna work out if it includes Pokemon, and then you just throw in some burpees and they'll do them. <laughs> You heard it here first. You heard it here first. That's yeah, right. Yeah. I think we're on to something here. So um, just a real quick, tell us about um, where we can go to your gym again. Uh, it's right down here in downtown, of course. All right. Uh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Yep, it's at 727 South Main Street. You can't miss it. It's black and orange. It looks like a Halloween store. So, okay. Yep, right there. Just come on in. We'll take care of you. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having uh, me. And I will definitely go check out Okay, bam. <laughs> thanks a lot, man. Gosh, man, I'm sweating just watching that interview, but I'm excited to have our next guest on. He is the COO of 3G Productions, and he is the managing partner of the brand new Enclave Event Center right here in Las Vegas. Put your hands together for Mr. Keith Conrad. Come on out. How you doing? Hey, hey bud. Good to see you. Pleasure. See yeah, happy to see you. <laughs> All right. Man. The event center's not even open yet. And these no, people these people, it's you. great. Yeah, that's exactly what you need. So, yeah. okay, so first off, um, you know, I was worried you weren't even going to make this interview, so y you weren't really at your call time tonight, and I just wanted to... No, I was just uh, r running around. We had a, a typical artist, broke a head mic in the back, oh. pissed off at one of their, their bandmates, and um, we're going on, and they, they didn't have any extra head mics, so we had to go find it somewhere else, you know, rob Peter to pay Paul, and then we get there, and he goes, nah, I want a handheld instead. <laughs> so T Typical artist. Typical artist. Yeah, yeah. but I apologize. Yeah. No, uh, this is all right. Yeah. It's all right. I'm glad this unnamed artist got their mic so they couldn't use it. Yeah, yes. It's important for me. It's kind of like Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so it sounds kind of like an exciting life you have. I um, want to kind of dive in a little bit deeper. Um, I want you to explain what 3G Productions is a little bit better. The way I understand it is uh, audio and visual production company, and I, I know some of the names you work with are the Britney Spears' this Theater, the Access Theater, EDC, Rock and Rio, Life is Beautiful, <laughs> Locals. Yeah. Yeah. You got you. You got to slow down the, okay. the local one. You know, oh, yeah, they, they yeah, gotcha. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so a, a lot of people don't realize is that bands don't own their own equipment. So there's companies like ours that are out there that rent out the high-end audio, video type of equipment to these bands. Uh, not only do we rent it out, we'll take bands on tours, we do broadcast events, we've been doing a lot of things with eSports lately. Uh, I don't know if there's eSports fans here. Yeah, but, there are uh, eSports fans. Yeah, yeah. We, we're, right. We're, we're, we're oh, here, watch this. Throw out a couple names of yeah, video games. Yeah. Le crazy. League of Legends. Anybody ever yeah. heard of League of Legends? Yeah. yeah. Oh. But yeah, so not only do we rent it out, we, we install <laughs> equipment in theaters and in, in hotels. Uh, you know, we're, we're currently working on a, a, a project to install at the Thomas & Mack Arena for UNLV. Um, and then we have a stagehand company where we have about five, 600 people that work for us and we do all the wow. back of house stagehand labor for T-Mobile Arena, Mandalay Bay Event Center. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is cool. And, um, and I love the fact that you joined when the, it was so small. Like, you know what I mean? To think that you could build, it's a great entrepreneurial story yeah, that you guys yeah. could build it up to such a huge was, company. Uh, my, the owners brought me in. I was employee number six. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're at uh, 35 full-time employees and 600 part-time employees. Yeah, now. give it up for them. That's huge. Yeah. It's a great, great growth. Yeah. 
Um, you know, I, I, love, I love the entrepreneurship story. So um, you are, do you know any celebrities by chance? I know. Because we <laughs> use them on our show. I'm wondering if you, you know. Yeah, there, you know the, I've, I've, I've met one or two in my what, day. What, so what do the celebrities demand from you as the audio visual people do they? Are they, well, they what, what, what they do is they always provide us with a rider. And what the rider is is oh, they course. require, you know. List of needs, list yeah. of, uh, pff, you, you can't know. perform your job without them. Yeah. yeah, all artists are right. like this and TV personalities and entertainment <laughs> people. Um, but from our perspective, it's, you know, audio equipment. There's certain particular things that they require. But there's also other aspects of it of, you know, what they require to actually show up and be there. Yeah. Any, any good stories? Any good writer stories? <laughs> Okay, if you twist my arm, I'll tell yeah, you one. Yeah, of course so, I Okay, am. all right. right. You were right. So um, that w we have an, uh, an artist uh, that she wants us to... Britney Spears. Nah, I you know, like, I told you, it's like, you it's like Fight Club. I can't tell you this. Oh, okay. So, okay. so I have to, she unrolls, you want she unrolls all the toilet paper, and then you put rose petals in I it, know. and you I roll know. it back up. So that when she goes to the bathroom, rolls it, rose petals come out. Really? Uh. I knew Adele was like that. I always, I always was. J Lo. J Lo, oh, it's got to be. All you got to watch is micro expressions. See if he tweaks a little bit. Uh, yeah, so, so these writers and and your companies often in charge of filling them. Well, we we don't fulfill that part of it. We we do do some full scale production, and when we do that, we have to to go out and uh, you know get the necessary things yeah. to do that. Luckily, I was not on that job. Yeah. See, I I have a writer, of course, for this show, and I always try to keep it really Big simple. Time. I want two swords pointing north. Right, not a big deal. <laughs> Somebody else's diary to read between breaks, and of course, candied ginger. Is that mm. see? You know, I'm kind of on the easy side. You'd Can say, I right? have one? Yeah, of course. That's what I got him here for. It for us. Sometimes. Oh, this is awful. <laughs> it's candy ginger. It's to make the guests look. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that wasn't part of the yeah. rehearsal, but it's fine. Um, okay. So let's talk about. Oh man, they're spicy. Yeah, they That's are. That's really Jeez. weird. I didn't know it was gonna oh. be. What is wow. candy ginger, yeah, bro? It's who fantastic. Got this? this is the worst joke we've ever done. <laughs> It's really hot. It's like, so like deep. We, it's like in your we throat, too. Water. Oh, my oh, goodness. Yeah, that's really hot. Wow. Uh, any audience members, we have plenty. Uh, Enclave, I want to yeah. talk about this awesome new theater. We've talked um, to a number of entrepreneurs in the past who have pointed towards this pattern where a lot of, a lot of them are experts in two things, not three, five, ten things, but they seem to have two passions, and then they kind of spend some part of their life on one, the second part on another, kind of bring it together. Mm -hmm. You seem like that story. You were in real estate. Um, then you went over to this audio company, which really wasn't your world, and then you became successful at that, and now you're building Enclave, which is a real estate project mixed with audio. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, that's, that's, that's very fair. Um, you know, I think you find passions and you don't even know what they're going to be until you actually experience them, you know. Uh, I, I kind of fell into the real estate thing and I, and I really enjoyed it. And, and I kind of fell into the audio thing as well. And, you know, my passion is really just about running small companies and getting people to work together. And, um, you know, this, this project is kind of a culmination of two different verticals with the real estate and the audio production. But it's really about the people, you know? Okay. So, so I wonder if we could bring up a couple photos of it. And Absolutely. maybe you could explain to people. I, the way I understand it is this is a, an event center that's truly built for musicians and artists to sure. use, right? Yeah, it's, um, so it's 75,000 square feet. Um, and, you know, Enclave and 3G are kind of sister companies. So 3G being an audio production company will be moving its uh, world headquarters here with all of our equipment. And we'll be, it's basically a production company putting on an event facility. Um, so yes, band rehearsals is a big thing. It's acoustically treated. It has all the necessary production elements, video production room, a green room, uh, things of that nature that artists uh, require. But it's also a space where we can host social events and corporate events and, um, you know, uh, additional type of things. It's, it was built really for as a blank space, you know. Filming, you know, there's a lot of filming that's coming to Nevada. Um, yeah. You know, some of the bigger spaces, I mean, it has 31-foot clear ceilings. It's got an elephant door in case you want to bring your favorite fuzzy animal in with you. Yeah. And, um, and not only, you know, does it have the indoor space, it has outdoor space as well. And we have a rooftop deck that has a full view of the strip. Layout, yeah. So we, we have two ma main rooms here. Enclave room is about 9,000 square feet. It has 31 foot clear. It has, um, uh, 
company switches, which is basically power that allows productions to go in there, so something you would see at a re an arena. Um, and then the Madrigal is 6,250 square feet, and it's more of a traditional ballroom space, so something you would see at more of a social event, um, an educational seminar, or something like that. Um, Pre-function space is up here. One's 1,000, one's about 1,500 square feet. And then we have a variety of different um, smaller and mid-sized conference rooms. Uh, one of them is an executive conference room that also could double as like a bridal suite um, or a production room or something of that nature. So as an audio guy, this is probably pretty fun for you to map out, right? Mm, I mean, finally yeah. having not having to work around someone but being able to build it from yeah. scratch. It, it was amazing because we go into facilities all over the world, right? And, and yeah. you, you look at things and it could be anywhere from, you know, the, the docks being far away from where it is. We have four dot loading docks coming in. Uh, we have the b ability to do broadcast to bring a broadcast truck in and have a mouse hole coming right through to be able to broadcast anywhere in the world. Um, you know, so it was fun to kind of start with a blank slate, you know, and, and, and design the whole thing from the ground up. Okay. So we're kind of running out of time, but for the last question, it's uh, one that I love to ask entrepreneurs is, with all the experience that you've been through, what's the one thing you think is most important to share with an audience of uh, entrepreneurs? Well, I, I, I think anybody could, you know, go out and raise money and come up with an idea. And ultimately, I think what the most important thing is to, of successful companies is uh, how hard the people work and finding characters that work together and people okay. that all have the same drive and the same desire. Yeah, you touched on that earlier. So you think, it, you think actually one of your main skills is the team building? Uh, absolutely. I think it's the, the, most the, it's the most important thing, I think, in any small business is getting people to all be working through a common goal. And everybody has their own you know, personalities and attitudes and things of that nature. And so how do you get everybody to come together every day and work for the same goal of the company? Was it JLo? <laughs> <laughs> See that face? <laughs> I think we got it. All right, give it up for Keith. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming. I question my conception of the perception of a connection. You know, just some meaningless obsession. But you know, your reflection does get clearer as you get closer to the bottom of the glass. The pain of a lover stripped from existence tinged with the sadness of unwilling resistance And exhausted epic tales that if only you knew if only you knew I'm trying to trick my eyes now wander in your direction That I once had for you. It has yesterday's love, or even one hour share echo dissipated into Monday night's chill. I
That was awesome, Mr. Sir. That was awesome. Where can we where can we hear more of your music? Where can we connect with uh, you can find me at MizAbsurd.com. It's M-I-Z-Z Absurd. Uh at M at Ms. Absurd on Twitter, Instagram. I play the big thing. I'm the music a spot. <laughs> right on, right on. And uh, how'd you come up with the name Ms. Absurd? Uh actually I was a philosophy major and uh I studied existentialism. And I love Albert Camus and John Paul Sartre and this the philosophy of the absurd. So I am rebel our, our, Albert Camus said art is our way to rebel against the absurd. So I am Ms. Absurd, rebelling against it. Right on, right on, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. I'd like to thank all of our guests this evening. Thank you to our cast and crew, to all you podcasts at home. Remember, you're all welcome to be a part of our live studio audience every Thursday night. 9 p.m. right here at the Inspire Theater. Party with us on the rooftop for the after party. Catch me at the downtown cocktail room every Thursday night for the after after party. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Downtown Podcast. Thank you. Salamat. Salamat. Peace. Love. Be kind to one another. Happy birthday!